Um, oddly enough, not from my wife. Um, it's the groups on Facebook, the conversations and the streams and the links that there are out there. If you look into it, it's apparent and it's something you want to get involved with. Yeah, I do. Um, obviously I've got the scar down my sternum. I've got two left and right on my rib cage. Um, I've got various scars from drain holes, uh, diasis. I've got scars in my forearms and crease in my elbows from shunts. And I've got scars in my groin from uh, catheterizations and exploratory surgeries. Am I proud of them? Yeah, I am. They're parts of me and they're the one thing that ties me as a little boy and me as an adult together. As I've got bigger and stronger, physically improved, they still remain. I can't think of what my body would look like without them. They make me proud because whenever my children see them, they always ask and they always touch and they want to know. And although it's not easy telling them and finding the right way to communicate with them about it without scaring the crap out of them, it's, it's nice that they want to know me. It's nice that it's recognised as being a cool part of Daddy, and you know, <laughs> it's what makes Daddy great. Which is good, it gives me a warm feeling inside. It's true. Um, I didn't understand it. Like I said, when I was 15 and I had my Fontan operation, I thought, that's great, that's me, I'm done. Uh, I can go off and I can do whatever the hell I want and it doesn't matter because I'm never going to be back on the operating table. Obviously, now I've had a Fontan redo, I understand that everything that's done is a repair, it's to give longevity um, to life and that's kind of hard to deal with in a way um, if you look at all the research and the papers that are done for the surgeries the number of times the word palliative is mentioned because that's what they are they're palliative surgeries they're not there to fix you forever they're there to keep you going one two three ten years who knows and that's something that my wife and I have learnt and we've got our heads around and that's one reason why I have no regrets about anything I've done. It's, it's important to know so that you can live your life well and you can live it to the best that you can. Lots of people don't understand it. My mum and dad who were with me for the first 18, 20 years whatever of my life they never knew or they didn't realise or they didn't want to admit to themselves that every operation is just to get me that little bit further down the line and I can understand why they wouldn't want to realise it and why they couldn't admit to it because if it was my kid I wouldn't want to admit to it either. I would be so scared of losing them. And it's easier to think that things are going to get fixed for good than patched up. Because patched up implies that it's going to break again. And if you have a real understanding of CHDs, then you realise that that's what's going to happen. Being on Warfarin certainly helpful. I was on Warfarin a long time ago after well, I must have been about 20 um, 
that the warfarin interfered with my lifestyle. Um, so I stopped having that. It was against my consultant's wishes that I stopped it. And I ended up being not very well. I had, I ended up with a massive clot in my heart that was about the size of a golf ball. Um, and that caused massive arrhythmias for which I had to have a pacemaker fitted in 2001 and I've had to have a pacemaker ever since then and I've had problems with arrhythmias reoccurring since then um, a lot of it down to scar tissue on the heart but a lot of it down to um, you know, coagulation therapies not being in place or not being adhered to the more accurate version so yeah warfarin's good for you like all the medication that they sell you to go on when they tell you to go on it go on it use it trust them okay tattoos and piercings again like i said i don't see anything wrong with it as long as you go to a reputable place it's clean but you'll probably get it in the neck from your consultant if you do so, choice is yours. So I don't think this really applies to me because in my case, yes, very. Um, I'm not likely to go through childbirth. But for women with CHDs, I've heard mixed stories, mixed versions. I think it depends on the severity of your CHD. And if you are thinking about it, you need to consult with your cardiology team but uh, don't ever say no see what they have to say and take it with guidance yes it did um, I, <laughs> I played on my own or I played with my sister and when my sister went off to play with her friends I played on my own again so yes I personally felt very left out of stuff. That's just my opinion. There are probably other people out there who don't and didn't feel left out. So it's, it's kind of a random one, maybe. Um, interesting. Yes, everything job-wise is fine when you first start out on the job market but if you're unlucky and you have a lot of appointments um, a lot of time off sick I have and it's, it's not so hard to get a job but to actually keep a job is I found it very very hard um, I've got a massive CV um, <laughs> and each job seems to last Two years three years at tops um, but most of them are like a year year and a half it doesn't help in a job and people I think it's because there's not that much general awareness of CHD in the population um, that people sort of can't, they can't accept that you know we have a disability as such and we're going to need extra time and extra care and extra attention, this, that and the other. Um, best employer I've ever had is Tesco's. Um, I had them, I started with them in December 2012. Uh, last year I had my Fontan operation. I had to finish with them uh, because we didn't know how long the recovery process would be. They took me back. Um, as soon as I was fit enough, or I felt fit enough, they took me back. Um, they gave me another job. And then I had my stroke. I was off. I had to leave their employee again. But they took me back. And recently I've, I've not been, I, I wasn't able to cope when they took me back. Um, and they didn't have any other openings for me. So I left. Um, but they've said as soon as I feel well enough and it's enough and um, 
everything like that, that they will have me back. Anybody's going to ever apply to a company and they run a CHD, apply for Tesco's. They're really, really good. They are brilliant employers. Anybody else, even the NHS, I don't know. I've, I've not had good experience with, with any other employees because of my sickness and time off. That's that. Um, I've answered all the questions. Steph, I really hope that it helps. Um, if not, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I hope it helps. And I look forward to seeing the videos when you're done. Alright, cheers.